Okay, we're up to um, video number 55 in our series um, Electrical Circuit Analysis. The uh, play this for all our videos is at the website digital-university.org. Um, in the previous video, we had determined, we looked at this very simple type of circuit, and at time t equals zero, we closed the switch, so there was a current flowing through here, and this is just simply the um, voltage drops um, around the uh, around the circuit, and we get this expression just by summing them. Let's just be clear about this. Remember the the current is going around like this, so the voltage drop across the resistor is like this, and then for the amount of time that we do have an induced voltage across the coil, its polarity is like this to oppose the current flow into it. That is just uh, Lenz's law. So if we go ahead and let's say we're going to sum all the voltage drops going in this direction. So here we're going from minus to plus, so that would be plus E. Then here we're going plus to minus, and that voltage drop there would be minus IR. And then here we're going plus to minus, so that would be then minus L di dt, and those have to equal zero. Or we can bring these to the other side of the equation. They come out positive, and we get this equation. And then what we did in the last video was to solve this differential equation so that we could get an expression for the current that flows through the coil. And the equation that we derived in our last video when we solved, the equation that we get for I when we solve this differential equation is that I, and this is the current flowing through the coil now, that equals E over R times 1 minus E to the minus R over L multiplied by T, where T of course is the time. And that's where we left off. We didn't take it any further than that. Well, let's see what, first of all, what happens now um, at the time when T equals 0? When t equals 0, we have e to the 0, which is 1. So we have 1 minus 1, that's 0. At time t equals 0, i equals 0. And again, we went over that in the, uh, the previous video. It isn't until some time, once this switch is closed, then at a time just a little ways past that, a fraction of a of a second or just a fraction of a time interval after that and then you start to get a small trickle of current. But at t equals zero there is no current and that's consistent with our equation. Now here we have one minus this quantity. Now here we have e to a negative exponent so what this means is that this is the same thing as one over e to the R over L times T. R is a constant, L is a constant, but of course T is going to be increasing. And as T increases, this denominator here is going to increase, or this whole fraction is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until when T is a large enough number, this essentially just becomes zero. So what that means is that, to try to graph this out, this is time, this is the current flowing through the coil. At time t equals zero, that's zero. Given the t is zero, this is e to the zero, which is one. One minus one is zero. But then as we go through time, the number that we're subtracting from 1 becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So the current goes something like this then. 
until it reaches this, I guess you would call it a steady state value of E over R. And of course, that's what we would expect. We have this simple circuit. Um, what, would, what would be the current flowing through it? It would just be E divided by R. But through the coil, it doesn't change instantaneously. It goes through this curve right here, which is predicated upon this equation right here. Now what about the voltage drop across the coil? That is equal to the inductance times di dt. Well, we know what i is. That's this. So we can take the derivative of this to get this expression. So VL will equal L times the derivative of this. Of course, this is 1, so the derivative of that is 0. The derivative of this is going to be, here we have a minus sign, so we're going to take this part down, so we're going to have minus from this minus sign, take this down, minus R over L times E to the minus R over L T. And then we also have this E over R we're multiplying it by times E over R. So minus times a minus, that's plus. These cancel. So now we get that the voltage across the con across the inductor equals L. But here then, this cancels out here. So we just get it's equal to E times E to the minus R over L times T. So let's take this. That is the expression then for the voltage, the induced voltage across the coil at any time. So let's write it down over here. We have the induced voltage VL equals E times E to the minus R over L times T. Now at time, when T equals 0, we're going to have E to the 0, that's 1, so VL equals E, and that's what we've been saying in the previous videos. And if we were to try to graph this out, this is T, this is the voltage across the coil, it starts off at E, make this a little bit neater, this is the voltage across the coil, the induced voltage. This is E, the power of our constant voltage source. It's a simple battery. And then it just falls off over time like this. So we've discussed these graphs in the um, previous videos, the previous two videos, but really it is from these equations that, because how these uh, graphs are derived, the one for the voltage across the coil, that's this. Then obviously, as and again we wrote it like this because here this is again it's a negative exponent, so we have one over e to the r over l times t. R and L is constants, but again, through, as time increases, this denominator here gets larger and larger, so this whole fraction gets smaller and smaller. So we're multiplying E by a smaller and smaller number until finally it just falls off to zero. So as you've been saying in the previous videos, initially, 
when this switch is thrown, the induced voltage across the coil is equal to E, then eventually it just falls off to zero. And the reason why it falls off to zero is that even though the amount of current that's going through the coil is increasing, its rate of increase becomes smaller and smaller, hence the induced voltage becomes smaller and smaller until finally the current that flows through this coil is just a steady state. It doesn't change at all anymore. It's just simply equal to E over R right here. So now di dt, of course, there is no change in the current. That equals zero. At that point, the voltage drop is going to be zero because that's zero, which is what we're showing here in this graph. So again, uh, same concepts of what we've been talking about in the previous videos, but as we said um, in this video number 55 and video number 54, we wanted to be a little bit more analytical. And to do that, we had to use some calculus um, to solve the, our differential equation here. And even though, and we had to do that even though we have, you know, a constant voltage source here. What happens is that as the current is increasing, before it gets to a steady value, this gradual increase in the current across the coil, sometimes that's called a transient current then. It just comes out to a steady value eventually. Okay, that's all we want to say in this video. What we're going to do in the next video is consider Suppose we have um, this situation. There's just a steady amount of current flowing through the coil. So what that means is that there's a magnetic field across the coil, but it's no longer growing, so therefore it's no longer cutting across these lines. Therefore, there's no longer an induced voltage, but there is a magnetic field across this coil. Now suppose then that we're in this situation where here, the current is steady. It just equals E over R. There is no more induced voltage across the coil. That's zero. But there's still a magnetic field in this coil that exists. It's just simply a static. It's not growing anymore. Well, then, suppose that. We had a switch, and we could just take the battery out of there. Then what will happen? Then, as we'll discuss the next video, we're going to have a decay current that goes across that circuit. And again, we'll discuss that in more detail uh, in the next video, in video number 56. So join us for that video. We're going to talk about the transient decay current. And again, it relates to what we were talking about, I think, in video number 53, only we're going to be more analytical, just as we've been during these, these uh, previous two videos. So come and join us for that, and we'll continue our discussion. And eventually, we can solve some specific um, uh, circuit problems involving resistors and inductors.